it's Shannon from Creative Chaos in Tennessee, and it's Friday, so that means it's time for another Mixed Media Mayhem. This week's prompts are watercolor analogous colors and black accent. So, I had no idea what that... Um, and a loud just whatever it's called. <laughs> I probably butchered it up. I had never, ever, ever heard of that before. So I had to look it up to see what it meant. And of course, I've done went and lost my paper. Oh, there it is. I had to go look it up. And it says it is three colors next to each other on the color wheel, composed of one dominant color. A supporting color and an accent color combination so you could have like two shades of red and an orange or you know a yellow orange and red they're supposed to be kind of close um, in color so um, we'll see but I took and um, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do the whole 30 days of sketches because it does start today and this is day one created by Ginger Bush. Um, doing 30 days of sketches is a big commitment and I already have a lot that I do. So I may play along when I can and not sweat the other, the other days. Um, I don't want to get overworked and stressed out. Um, over sketches so we will see um i think i'll play along as much as i can and that'll be good enough so i just wanted to let y'all know that um i may not do every day so this one is created by the awesome ginger um over at ginger's corner and really simple sketch has so many different ways you could use it but I decided that I was going to flip it. So I flipped it over like this on the side. So then whenever I flipped it, um, I was trying to figure out, because I needed to be able to use vertical photos um, for what I had picked out. And I found these pictures of my husband. I'd even saved some of the um, memorabilia from it. But my husband playing one of those coin pusher games whenever we was on spring break last year. Or maybe it was the year before. I think it was the year before. But anyways, we had went to Pigeon Forge and um, went to this arcade. And they had this Wizard of Oz coin pusher game. Now, if he sees any coin pusher game, that's where all his money's going. <laughs> He will totally put all his money in there. He don't care. He needs to get all the things. He's very OCD. So, he loved this. Um, and we actually came back to this place two or three days in a row because we had bought like a pass. And you could do go-karts, arcade, laser tag, um, blacklight mini golf, and all that for like, I think it was like $30 a person. Which is really cheap in a tourist town pretty much. So, um, but this is where all, all his time went and all his money went. So, um, I'm going to scrapbook these. I'm going to do, um, since I am combining this with mixed media mayhem, I had to do mixed media. So I started playing around and then I thought, you know what? I like what I've created. So I'm going to keep it and I'll just show y'all how to do it on a different card or something um the technique because i'm kind of using a technique i saw vicky booten use on her last friday night live um i think it was last week's friday night live but i love watching her on fridays um i don't get to play along as often as i like so i thought i would try it out but this is some of the memorabilia this is the card that came from the machine which they told us we weren't allowed to take, but I stuck it in my pocket because, I mean, what am I going to do with this? I was going to use it for my scrapbook and this coin, and they're like, they have to turn those in, but I kept it, so don't y'all tell on me, okay? 
like I really needed it for the scrapbook. <laughs> um, and I just glued a piece of paper to the back of it. I cut it off because it had a little ticket, um, a little white edge that had been punched for some reason. I don't know. Maybe it was hanging at some point. Um, but I cut that off and just added this piece of paper so I can do my journaling on the back. And then I have this coin that I'm going to add. And then um, I did make a little tin man for my dies that I have. Y'all saw me do those before several times. Um, I went and Googled... Um, Emerald City SVG free or something like that and it pulled this up I stuck it in Cricut cut it out I took a bunch of my little scrap pieces of green I dug through them I cut it in black and dug through them and just backed them to give it different patterns and shades of green technically I wasn't supposed to use green because it wasn't part of the analogous colors or or whatever they're called but it is what it is. It's my layout, and and ultimately, I'm going to add that little touch. Um, this I created. I took a sheet of yellow paper, and I'll show y'all how I did this. But I cut this out on my Cricut. I went ahead and glued it because the little letters were so tedious. I didn't want to lose any. But I made the O and the Z bigger on purpose so that it always stood out. And I put off to find the wizard instead of off to see the wizard because my husband was off to find the wizard card so that he could get more bonus points or whatever. <laughs> and then I have these that I fussy cut out of a Vicky Booten paper, which they're poppy, so gorgeous and fits the bill because they went through the field of red poppies in the Wizard of Oz. Absolutely love the Wizard of Oz. And then I have these two stencils. Um, they're both from Timu. And I'm going to use these. So, I'm going to show y'all how I kind of created this. I'm just going to do it on a smaller version um, for right now. To use my watercolors, because I used watercolors and all that to do it. So, I just have a piece of, this is actually watercolor paper I cut down for the 100 days challenge. And I started cutting it down and I was going to do tags and stuff every day and I just, I'm too busy. I don't have time to do it. I usually do some form of art, but I didn't want to do something separate for it. So, it is what it is at this point. So, pretty much for this layout, um, I took this stencil and I laid out where my Emerald City was going to go <clears throat> that I cut out. And I just kind of made it so that it looks like it's shining in the background. I didn't think about it before, but then I got looking online because um, I googled a picture so that I would have something to stick on this one because I didn't want to cut out another die cut. And they had a rainbow in the background they was walking towards down the yellow brick road. So I was like, ooh, I could totally do a rainbow with this stencil. So for this little card thing... I'm going to do a rainbow in the sky. So, um, let's see. I think I'm going to do the rainbow first. And on the other one, on my layout, I used my Distress Oxide ink. I used this and just used my dauber and put it on. But since I'm going to create a rainbow, I'm just going to use my watercolors and a brush because it'll be a whole lot quicker. Um, to get the colors instead of trying to ink up and all that stuff. So, let's just do that. Okay, let's see. I'm just going to take my sprayer and wet up some of my inks for my rainbow. Alright. So, I'm going to start with red. I'm going to get actually get a different brush. It's a little bit bigger to fill in faster. Hopefully, this one's clean. I was using it. Uh, it looks like it's got a lot of pink in it. But it'll be okay because we're going to use red. So, I'm just going to put this in. Let's just add some water over here. I already have a lot of red from creating my flowers, which I'll show y'all how to do too. So, 
Let's just do this. All right. So, I'm just going to go in rainbow order. And if y'all don't know, I do sing the rainbow song usually. You know, red, orange, yellow, then green, followed by blue. Indigo and violet, that's the rainbow song for you. Um, because, you know, Cat in the Hat knows a lot about that. And he definitely knew his rainbow song. My kids watched it a lot when they were little. And um, I used to hear it. But I can never remember what order the rainbow went in. Right? So, it helped me out. <laughs> Who would have thought? Okay. I'm going to have to refill my water, it looks like. Okay. I just want to grab a little bit of this orange for the next one. I don't want it to go on too thick. So, just getting a little bit of water mixed in. And this one ain't going to be 100% because it is a circle with little dashes in it. So, it's just probably going to have a little bit of each color. And in between over here, I'm just spraying my brush with the water a little bit to kind of clean the... And I've got a paper towel to clean the color out of it some. Um, add a little bit of water. Let's see. Ah... Say here. There we go. Alright, put the yellow on. Red, orange, yellow, green is next. And this is a little more time consuming um, showing you guys this way, but. Like I said, it would have been even more time consuming to do the background and show y'all how I did it. So, I feel like it's just easier to do this. So, I think I'm going to move this down. Well, maybe not. I need another, another ring. So... Do the blue. Because I still have to put my yellow brick road in, so. Alright, and then we have purple left. see how this turns out. Woo! It's a little what? <laughs> Alright. So, good enough. Um, we got our rainbow going. Woo! I got a big wet mess where I've sprayed. Okay, let me dry this up a little bit. Alright. So, now you could technically go in, this is all watercolor paint, so, you know, you could go back in and spray it a little bit, and it would, probably too much, um, it would combine your colors together a little bit more, if you wanted them to. Um, you could even take a paintbrush in and just, um, maneuver them around just a little bit. Um, I'm going to actually dab this off so that it's not really bright. Okay, so that's pretty much how I did my circle, except it was much simpler because I didn't think about doing a rainbow, or I would have actually did a rainbow on it. But, um, and then I went back in, and I also have these, um, 
pearlescent watercolors. I think that's what they're called, but they're like goldy, shimmery. And um, I went back in in like a little bit darker orange and just added a little bit with the paintbrush just to make it shimmery. And I could do that, and I might go back and do it afterwards off camera in between the colors, but we'll just move on um, so that y'all can see what's going on and it don't take a million years. So next, all I did was take this um, sheet with yellow on it, and I cut a piece off. Let's see here. Because we can always trim it down. And then, um, pretty much, I took and just used my stencil. And I know it's hard to see. Oh, trying to find something darker. Um, it's half and half, but I just used um, this, this side with the bricks. Because it actually looked like the yellow brick road. So, we have this. We're going to create the, the road. So, let's do here. So, I'm just going to use my Distress Oxide for this. And this is just to, you could totally do it on white. I could do it straight onto the card. This is just to add a little more um, depth to it, pretty much. So, I'm going to start up here so that my road comes down. Um, and this is exactly what I did on the other paper to um, create this one for... Um, for my layout and then I just moved it over and I tried to lock line them up so that you could still see that it connected to go across more Ooh, it's a moving on me I'm not holding it good okay and then on this one, to end it and make it go down the other way, I just flip my stencil over. Oop, if I'll hold on to it. And then just inked it in. So, and then you have your road. So, that's what I did. And then I just fussy cut out around the edges of the bricks over here to create the road. And I feel like not having them all even just gives it a little more character, pretty much. That's pretty much what I did. And then I um, just took my black soot um, distress oxide and I just went around. I inked up the edges and I rubbed it on here a little bit also just to give it a little bit of wear and tear because, you know, the yellow brick road was not perfect. Okay, so then you have your road. And then the other thing was I did poppies. Now, this can be, of course, moved down, whatever you want it to be. Um, the poppies was the uh, Vicki Booten, her Friday Night Live. Um, her, she made um, a layout and used and made flowers using her finger to paint. So, pretty much what I did to create my field of poppies over here is, I'm going to turn my heater off at my feet, it's burning my toes. Okay, um, what she did was she just got her watercolor, and of course I just used reds and all that since I was having to do colors close together, and just took her finger and she just did multiple uh, little finger petals and then brought them together and then let it dry and then went back in and made more layers excuse me so it don't look perfect and i wanted more poppy 
style, which a poppy is round. I mean, this is literally what a poppy looks like. Um, it has a couple layers and then usually a black center with the little things coming out. So, um, let me get a little bit of this red paint. I just use different colors and build it up. Um, and I just tapped it and then left it so that some of the darker color could stay in the center and stuff. And I just did different colors just to give it a little more dimension and depth. So let's put some up in here. Now, I will link Vicky's video. She is the queen of mixed media, and I am most definitely not. Um, I just like to dabble and play and, you know, all the things. Um, but I don't claim to be an expert or even very good at it. I just, I just kind of do what I like. <laughs> so, um, pretty much that is the gist of it. Um, and you can go back, add more layers and all that stuff to create your flowers. So what I did was, um, I went back in with my brush, with my big brush, and I got black on it. Let me add some water. My bottle is almost empty, so it doesn't want to spray. I need one of those upside down sprayers or whatever they're called. Um, okay. So then you just take the black to create the black center and I dabbed some of it off so it wouldn't be too much. But I just went back in and I just pressed down a little bit um, for the centers of them. These are still a little bit too wet really to be doing this but I don't want to be here all night showing y'all how to watercolor when I'm not um, well versed in it myself because I just like to dabble okay so y'all get the idea so then you have your centers and of course you know you can play around with it light dark whatever um so you have that so once it's dry let's see if I can dry it real fast Um, it's watercolor, so it, it dries pretty fast. I just took my pen. Now, Vicki used... Um, Y'all have to go and watch this because her doodling is superior. Um, oh, look at that. I done got it running. Shaking it around, trying to dry it. It's okay. You can always go back in and add more color back over it to, to fix your boo-boos. Watercolor, I have found, is pretty forgiving um, whenever it comes to all that so okay anyways let's work with these it is dry so pretty much all she did was she went around and doodled and you have to use a fine pen and then I just went through and did my centers and then I just drew the little black black centers on them so I just went around and did it to all of them it don't have to be perfect you don't have to outline every little detail your pen doesn't even have to write all the way around but as long as you use the little fine line um pen then that's good um if you use a big chunky one um it adds a little too much to it so so y'all get the idea i mean it's very basic and um on some of them i went around and did that just to have a second layer but you could totally use a white pen and do it um, there is no wrong or right. So I will finish this off camera and show you guys how it turns out. But I have this and then I went online and I printed out this picture so that I could have something to put on here. I just googled free Wizard of Oz cartoon pictures to print and this popped up. I saved it and printed it. Um, and then I fussy cut it out. I printed it I think in a 4 by 6 size. And that way they could be walking into the rainbow down the uh, yellow brick road. 
So, like I said, I'll finish this off camera and finish out all the little details and all that that needs to be done. I might even add some blue sky in. Um, I don't know, but let's get to the layout. Now that I've showed y'all my basis of how I created the background for this, the rest of it is fairly fast because now we're just gluing stuff down. So, I have my um, yellow brick road to put down here at the bottom that I did. And I probably actually should have um, moved my flowers on down a little bit more just to put them beside the yellow brick road instead of just up here. But if y'all watch Vicky's video, you'll see I kind of tried to model after her. Of course, I'll never, never be that good, but um, it's a nice thought. Oh, I couldn't find my Emerald City. Here it is. Okay, so then I'm going to add on my Emerald City, and I did pop it up on foam tape. I stuck to the challenge of the analogous colors. Is that what they're called? Somebody tell me if I'm pronouncing that right. Analogous colors. Um, I stuck to it for the most part. I have yellows, oranges, and reds. Other than this green I, I stuck in. Um, then I used up scraps. Yay. That was good. I did go back and um, cut a hole here, just fussy cut around where I had stenciled um, so that part of my picture can go in there so that, um, let's see, this one needs to go on this side. Ooh, I almost did it. I almost messed up. I have my little uh, card from the game he was playing that I'm going to stick behind there and use it like a tag to pull out. have to leave space for that okay to fit down in there see I'm thinking I'm gonna do this and then I can do my journaling on the back to tell how much he loves how much he loves it okay I'm just gonna leave that there so maybe it'll glue with it enough room all right so this one I just fixed so that I could tuck it down in here behind and still see the little glow from the Emerald City. Now that's a horse of a different color. <laughs> I love the Wizard of Oz. I so want to go to the um, Oz theme park that they open once one weekend or two weekends a year or something like that in October in North Carolina. I want to go to that so bad. Um, Maybe one day. I think it's like four, probably like four hours away from me or something. So, it'd be a good little drive for sure. Um, let's see. And then I have this little tin man. Now, I had to put the tin man. Like, I just had to because I always tell my husband that he is the tin man. That he doesn't have a heart. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of a running joke at our house. So... He's not offended by it. Um, I tell him he's the Grinch and he's the Tin Man. He literally has his Facebook profile picture set as the Grinch. Um, so I guess he's just learned to live with it. <laughs> All right. I probably will have to use tacky glue to glue that down. But um, I'm just going to put this on there. And then I have the big poppies that I fussy cut that I want to stick in there just to add a little bit of something else to it. Um, just a little bit more. So, my thought was this. To put one here. I did put a little piece of foam tape on here. Let's add a little bit of glue over here. 
because it's not covering up anything. Actually, Blake and Brooks on this game in the background, and then he's only here. But the sketch had three pictures, so I wanted to add three pictures, and this was the only other picture there was with him in it playing the game. So I thought I'll just add it. And then I'm thinking I'm going to put this one here. works and then this one of course is going to go over here and I'll probably have to pull a little bit of that foam tape up to stick it underneath there okay looks good to me I like that um I think that's it, and then I will be um, doing my journaling underneath this card um, and telling the story. I could have flipped it over that way, but I, I want the card to show. So, I mean, it's not going to show, but it is. So, that will stick up out of my page protector, so it'll be easy to pull out um, and access. And I think that's going to be it. Thank you, Ginger, so much for the awesome sketch. Um, see how it resembles the Emerald City? <laughs> if you turn it sideways. So, um, thank you. I will post all the links below for everything. Um, I hope that you will try a little um, watercolor. And I will try to remember to link that video to Vicki Booten's Last Friday Night Live. Um, and go over there and try it out. So until next time, bye y'all.